it's that time of year again when the grasses and weeds pop up everywhere. The animals spend the day foraging for food. few snowy days and looking at the brown for months. Summer's a refreshing change we look forward to every year. Out in the courtyard, grasses and weeds grow and mesquite beans accumulate. But goats are not allowed in for reasons not needed to mention. In the past, we've spent time and energy mowing grass, picking weeds, and gathering beans. This year, we've devised a goat-powered mower. Okay, this is Bridget. She's gonna be our little mower today. I'm gonna eat some grass. We start with something heavy that has a hole in it. Okay, anything will heavy, heavy will work here, and then we're just gonna stake it down with, this is just like a, I don't know, what's that, a foot, foot, 18 inches, something. And then we'll hammer that down. Depending on the terrain, a longer stake may be needed. A lead rope is securely attached. A lead rope hooked on to it. And we're talking like, you know, secure, secure. <laughs> They're kind of smart. Okay, so we just hook her up. Now, all she needs is access to water. The bucket kind of on the edge so she doesn't tip it over too. Otherwise, the, it'll get caught up and tip over. Bryson okay, is go. using an old brake disc for his right. anchor. Oh, stake out. Now, there's two ways you can move this thing. Go dragage, or you can just pick it up. Carry it where you want it. Stake it low to the ground so that it doesn't get tangled. We found that a dog collar works the best because it's strong and it trains the goat at the same time. Here's some weeds before the goat mower and after. This is the work of a two goat powered engine. Oh, and BTW, don't laugh at the dry patches. This isn't your average everyday Kentucky farm. It's the Southwest. me lip now. Move your fingers or I'll remove them for you. They put some weird device on my head and everything I do around here. I eat grass, I give them milk, I sometimes bought them, but that's irrelevant.